Well, the unique thing about Barron was that we didn't have any financial aid and the kids that came there really wanted to play baseball and they wanted to get a good education. So we fostered that and uh, we were behind the eight ball in some ways because we were an NAIA school playing other schools that had financial aid. And that made it a little difficult, more difficult because we didn't have any juniors and seniors for the longest time. So it was challenging, but we had really good kids. Kids that, that are friends with me today, because at the time I was only like 23 years of age, a couple of years older than them. Yeah. So, uh, As the head baseball coach at Penn State Barron, he racked up more than 150 wins from 1969 to 1981. And he was all about going after the best player and best person. He even remembers trying to recruit a big time player from Pittsburgh. What he didn't know was that this kid was also a quarterback, but he fondly remembers trying to recruit Dan Marino because Marino sent him a letter thanking him for offering him a chance to play in Erie, Pennsylvania. Ironically, Marino and Stoner, both drafted by the Royals, decades apart, but both great players. I grew up in State College. Oh, okay. Played it, went to Penn State, played baseball there, and then went on and played minor league ball. And after that was over, went to Barron. What was it like playing at Penn State? Well, it was, you know, it was my backyard. It was unique in that sense, and you know, not many local kids in, the, in those days played there. Uh, it was a great atmosphere. We had great facilities. We had good coaches, and uh, I, I felt it was great for developing me at that point. How was the team? Back in those days, we only played probably 28 games, 30 games or whatever. We had some very good teams, you know. Um, the Northern schools had a tough time getting into the College World Series. If you look at the history of that, it's uh, very rare. There was the last one I can remember was Maine had a run where they got in there a time or two. But the bottom line is if you look at the final teams that go to Omaha, there aren't many Northern teams in that group. Shorty Stoner was a great player. In fact, for the longest time, held the record for most doubles by a Nittany Lion. But tonight, he enters the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame for his legendary status as a coach. So you end up in Erie, Pennsylvania. Did you know Erie before that? No, so was I did a culture not. Shock? I did not know Erie at all. I mean, I knew of it, but I'd never been there. Uh, the reason I went to Barron in the long run, I had a number of offers. Uh, I didn't want to go to a high school. I wanted to start out at the college level. And they had a baseball program, and they told me that I would be the baseball coach if I came there. And so uh, I made that decision to go there as opposed to some other places. And it turned out to be a very good thing because my colleagues there were very helpful. I was the youngest guy in the department. They were mentors to me and uh, helped me along. Dr. Roger Sweeting was a basketball coach and athletic director. And Herb Loffer was a soccer coach and tennis coach. Alan Otto was a wrestling coach. And uh, don't know where I'd be without him. It was very clear that when talking about his days at Penn State Barron, he began to get choked up. But when we asked him for pictures and videos from his playing and coaching days, he said he was never one to think of memories. He was always living in the moment. And that was until now, when he learned he was being inducted into the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame. You know, nostalgia comes in there, but... Uh... I can't remember a lot of details about those games, to be honest with you. I've never dwelled on it. I, you know, I went out and played. I, I enjoyed the competition. That's what it was all about for me. And uh, I never really looked at the highlights. I will say that, you know, having this COVID situation caused me to be more nostalgic and to reflect back on the early years. And uh, it's one of the things I like to try to push on the public these days, and that is that your coaches that you have all the way up through can be very influential in how you turn out. And I was very fortunate, I was blessed to have good coaches. Coaches that knew what they were doing. Uh, they made the game fun. If you look at uh, K.L. Sanders under Penn State and the wrestling program, that's a key word, fun. Yeah. And uh, I would hope that today's people would realize how valuable those coaches are 
and would leave them alone. You know, most parents really aren't strong on, on evaluating their own kid's talent. And it should be the coach that does that, and yet they interfere. I mean, they interfere big time. To the point where many good potential coaches don't even coach anymore. And those that do sometimes leave very quickly. So I would like to make an appeal. Just do what you can to make the coach's job easier. Without question, a career highlight for coach, getting to coach his son as a Nittany Lion. It's for that, all he did at Penn State Barron, all he did as a player, all he did as a faculty member in our community that earns him a spot in the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame. I was very honored and humbled for that. I mean, it just goes to show you that if you get your name in the paper a few times and you hang around long enough, longevity, I think, played a factor in that. And also like to thank Mike Vetzner because I think he probably nominated me. He's on the board of the Erie chapter of the Sports Hall of Fame. And uh, Mike and I go back a long ways. We played together as teammates on the Carpet Town Fast Pit softball team in Erie. We're a pretty good team. I'd like to congratulate the other people that are being inducted this year. I don't know much about them. I'm much older than they are. Uh, but I'm sure they've done, they've done wonderful things. Congratulations.